Let's drill down into that sentence, that trans women are women. In order to understand what trans rights activists and gender ideology proponents mean by this, we need to think carefully about the language and the words used. Firstly, let's look at trans. Well, we already know that trans doesn't necessarily mean transsexual or someone who's going through reassignment surgery. We know by Stonewall's own definition that it now includes cross-dressers and drag artists, as well as non-binary people or gender-fluid people who may change their gender whenever they feel like it. It also includes autogynophilic men who derive sexual pleasure from the notion they have a female body. We can take it to mean that these groups have also been included under trans women in this sentence. So what about R? Well, Initially, the slogan trans women are women was meant figuratively to suggest that trans women should be treated as if they were women, so society should change to understand their dysphoria and act accordingly wherever possible, such as using their preferred pronouns through politeness and common courtesy. However, the trans rights activists have now changed this meaning, so the word are now means literally are. Trans women literally are women. They were literally women when they were born, and they are literally women now, despite having male genes and genitalia, and many, if not most, not wanting to make any attempt to transition medically. This causes an issue with cross-dressers and drag artists though, as trans women are women suggests that any man who wears makeup or a dress literally becomes a woman through this act alone. It causes an even bigger issue with autogynophiles, as the argument suggests that men who are aroused by the idea of being women are actually literally women. Finally, we have the word women itself. So what is a woman? Well, there's two different answers to that question depending on who you ask. Firstly, there's the scientific, biological answer, which is that women are adult human females. If you're born a female, then you're a woman, no matter how you choose to identify. This means that trans women are not women in any biological sense. This is the gender critical argument, and even though some transgender people believe this themselves, the trans rights activists call this belief transphobic. Trans rights activists were very quick to dismiss JK Rowling's essay by claiming that no one is denying biology exists, when actually that's what they've consistently been doing for years. So either the gender ideology activists are being disingenuous, outright lying, or completely unaware of their own movement's message, all of which are very problematic ways for a movement to behave. Secondly, there's the identification answer, which states that anyone who identifies as a woman is a woman, literally. This ignores biology and asks society to change the language around biological sex itself. Whoever feels like a woman is a woman, literally is a woman, whenever and wherever they feel like it. This is self-ID. Excuse me, it's ma'am. It is ma'am. I can call the police if you'd like me to. You need to settle down. You need to settle down and mind your business, okay? Ma'am, once again, ma'am. I said both of you. No, you said sir. Once again, it's ma'am. I actually said both of you guys. It was a general. Right beforehand, you fucking said, sir. Sir? Okay. Motherfucker, take it outside. If you want to call me sir again, I will I show you a fucking sir. I apologize. Motherfucker. I apologize now. Because you teach this. You teach trans studies. So, so many gender identities that, in your view, require non-traditional pronouns. Basically it's not correct that there is such a thing as biological sex. And I'm a historian of medicine. I can unpack that for you at great length if you want, but in the interest of time, uh, I won't. So that's a very popular misconception. It's truly a fascinating, complex um, uh, field of study, but that does not mean that there is no such thing as biological sex. If she were but a student of yours, what would you call her? She. There's something going on that, that, that people really haven't put their finger on. And I, I've been thinking about it at multiple levels of analysis. And there's one very deep level of analysis that I don't think anyone has addressed. And I would think about it as a, as a cognitive level of analysis. And it has to do with the nature of categorization itself. What, what happened, what's happening very rapidly is that because the binary category has been, um, let's, call, let's say, violated, that's one way of thinking about it, you get an explosion of chaotic identities. And so it's gone from, say, two to the proposed, I suppose, three, which, which would have been what the formulators of the legislation, I think, were hoping for, to, say, 31 in New York and 70 online. It's a really interesting example of, the, of how, say, binary categories maintain order. And then if you violate them to include those who are excluded, 
what you produce is an upswelling of 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 unmanageable chaos. That, that's the other thing too is that in the in Bill C-16, there's actually an assault on the concept of reality because identity is technically unmoored from its biological substrate. And so that means it's unmoored from the objective. And as soon as it's unmoored from the objective, then it's subjective and in principle can be anything. But then that, what that seems to do is immediately open the door or has opened the door to, I would say, an uh, a philosophical assault on the concept of gender itself with, that culminated, for example, in Dr. Nicholas Matt's um, claim on TVO's The Agenda when he was debating me that there were no biological differences between men and women and that that's what the science over the last four decades has claimed. A remarkable, remarkable claim. Wow, so these people are actually alleging that there are no biological differences between men and women. That is totally crazy and completely counterintuitive. And, and you know, what Peterson also implies in that clip is that by destroying the binary concept of sex and gender, in other words, by assaulting our concepts of what being a man or woman means, specifically by allowing males to identify as women, it actually threatens to destroy the category system itself and hence cause a kind of social chaos. And subsequently, it leaves the door open to all kinds of other bizarre inversions of reality. And that all seems very dangerous. Well, I've been threatened myself many times because I am somebody who sort of stubbornly insists on reality. Okay, so I'm not a woman. Even if I were to do this on a full-time basis, seven days a week, it still wouldn't make me a woman. Even if I was to have used puberty blockers when I was young and used hormone replacement therapy, I could still use hormone replacement therapies. I don't want to because I think it's dangerous. But even if I'd done all these things, uh, even if I'd had surgery, it wouldn't change my sex, right? Sex is determined at the chromosomal level, right? And you can't change your chromosomes. So men cannot become women. So because I'm sort of a, a stickler for reality and believe that I have a right to reality, I'm not going to call somebody who's a man uh, a woman um, when they're not. I am firmly on the side of womanhood now, but I am not a woman, nor will I ever be. Three sentences later, I use the women's restroom because I am a woman. I changed my gender, I'm a birth certificate to female because I am a woman. So there's a little confusion there, right? Not for me, what's wrong with that? May I ask you one more question? Definitely. How, how many genders do you believe there are? Really don't know that one. I wish I wish there was a, there was a thing, but there's chromosomes, there's cells, there's the fact of you teleporting and once photon teleportation does happen, it's how much of you actually is you and how much of whatever is going on isn't you. It, it's a very complicated thing and it's just a structure that we don't really understand besides X, Y's and where we come from and it's, it's very complicated to even say if we're alive. I mean, I'd never even heard of transgender before the age of 40. I discovered all of this like, amazing science that's, that, that finally made sense. It kind of deconstructs gender, it queers gender. You know, I spent years trying to pass as male. There are some important conflicts of interest here. Trans activists would have you believe that there is absolutely no conflicts of interest here whatsoever. There are no consequences for biological females if we go along with the ideology that they promote, and I disagree. So I think that there are some permissions, protections, resources that if we give them to self-identifying trans women, we will take something away from biological women. And even worse, it will be taking away something that's already in short supply. Um, if same-sex spaces for females, where they undress or where they sleep, are removed or reduced, as is starting to happen across the UK anyway, then this potentially reduces the, sef the safety of females from sexual violence, which was already in short supply. So you can make that sort of point with respect to female sport, uh, media representation, there's a range of areas you could argue that. If trans women are literally women, not just legally, but in every possible context, then, uh, and even more so if self-identifying trans women are literally women in every possible context, then that does nothing less 
than force society into a complete re-understanding of what it is to be a woman. And obviously that has an impact on the biological females who were already occupying that category. So it's perfectly okay for us to talk about that because it has an impact on our lives. Okay.